Uh, as a child, my mum got so fed up with me wandering off, she made me wear a bell around my neck whenever we went shopping. Wow. Please, <laughs> Tim. Was she a cow? <laughs> I'm not sure that Miles's mother being a cow would explain it, because I don't think it's the cow's own policy to wear the bells. <laughs> so, first of all, how bad were you at wandering? Was this a regular thing? I wouldn't stay still. Any sort of open space I would see as a thing to run towards rather than... So you know, what was... shopping centres were you going to that were such wide spaces to well, run in? Uh, I suppose uh, Brent Cross Shopping Centre would have been our, our regular haunt. But OK. No. What age was this? I would have been about probably four to the age of seven. And when you were in infant school, every time you went out to the playground, did everyone think it was playtime over and straight back in again? <laughs> <laughs> It, it was only done on family outings. Only done on shopping because... days. Shopping okay. Day. And is it a traditional bell with the little thing inside that clanks yeah, what against does it look the? Like? like a sort of cat spell, essentially. But hang on, there's one massive problem here. A cat is on all fours and the bell dangles. The bell oh, is going to be yeah. touching your body and it won't dangle. Discuss. Well, <laughs> she attached it to a part of me that, that dangled. <laughs> What was the furthest you ever got? What were you searching for? Um, <laughs> I hope it wasn't sparrows, cos you'd never get them. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Brent Cross terms, I, I once got from John Lewis to Phoenix. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> uh, Mars, could I ask you to tell me how big the bell was, but accurately? <laughs> <laughs> Can, I suppose three-quarters of the size of a ping-pong ball. Hang on. And was it, was it a sphere or bell-shaped? Any bell, by definition, is bell-shaped. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you think, Sarah? It sounds a bit draconian, you know, a bell round your child's neck. Yeah, I think it would be a terrible failing of parenting, <laughs> so not for me. It's, it's just not a system that works. If no. you've drifted into a Morris dance area, then you're going to have a panic attack. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. what you'd have in the horror film yeah. version of your life, yeah. where yeah. you yes. run off and then your mother's desperately looking for you and then suddenly she sees a load of Morris dancers and it totally confuses <laughs> the system. Lots of close-ups of grinning Morris dancers. No, no, the Morris yeah. dancers, the Morris dancers. I can't hear Miles' yeah. little tinkling bell. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah. could be describing any Saturday of my childhood. <laughs> So what are you going to say, Lee? We're not having no. it. They're not having we're not it. Having no, they're it. saying it's a lie. Uh, Miles, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Uh, that was a lie. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Miles' mum didn't make him wear a bell around his neck. I was once dumped on an aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> I've just signed a publishing deal for my gritty debut crime novel uh, featuring the exploits of detective duo Nice and Spicy. <laughs> is it hyphenated Nice and Spicy? Oh, or... no, there's a duo. One is called Nice. <laughs> Jeremy Nice. <laughs> Did you think there was only one of them called Nice and Spicy? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Detective Inspector Nice and Spicy. <laughs> It's a nice and spicy, and his partner, who has no name at all. <laughs> it's a duo. Jeremy Nice, Ian Spicy. So you sat down with a blank piece of paper and you came up with nice and spicy. Well, there's a backstory because okay. Jeremy, when it starts, he's quite sad because the person he worked with, uh, uh, Mark Cheap, uh, died. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it used to be nice and cheap. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> What sort of men are they, Miles? Well, uh, Jeremy is incredibly tall and uh, Ian is incredibly short. Right. <laughs> uh, and that means they're one of the few people on their force that are given a, a police car with the sunroof. <laughs> <laughs> Have you written a book before? Uh, yeah. What was your other book called? Uh, other books. Uh, <laughs> How uh, many books have you written? Uh, well, this is the third. So the two, if you want to, me to do all the maths for you. What? what... <laughs> <laughs> Presumably you do. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Because a lot of people with an Oxbridge education, they can come across as condescending and a little bit... <laughs> and yet you, you, you because... somehow carry off beautifully, this Mark. Is well, I don't... <laughs> this is because I don't have it's an Oxbridge funny. education. Because a lot of... <laughs> oh, you don't have an Oxbridge no. education. What do you have? Just an accent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this one called again? It's called Blood in the Water. Oh. What, what's, what's the plot of Blood in the Water? Well, I'll tell you how it begins. I'm not Nasty to... urinary tract infection. 
No, I don't want to tell you too much of the plot. That's oh, the okay. whole Sell point it. of a who done it. Don't worry. Can I'm I... not buying All it. All I'll say... <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I've got a feeling nobody's buying it. <laughs> so, what do you think? Do you think it's a lie, Annika? Do you think it's a lie? I think it's a lie, personally. You think it's a lie? Yeah. Liz? I think it's a lie. I'll say a lie. Right, Miles. Um, it sounded lovely. Was it true or was it a lie? Uh, well, uh, it is, in fact, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Miles hasn't written a novel about the detective duo Nice and Spicy. <laughs> Whilst on holiday in South Africa, I had a two-minute conversation with what I thought was my wife, only to discover that a small hippo had wandered into the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, what do you make of that? <laughs> Miles, <laughs> describe your wife to us. <laughs> Uh, tall, slender, statuesque. <laughs> so did the hippo had a very similar voice to your wife? <laughs> uh, the, the hippo was just sort of moving gently around. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> not for that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not in an especially close proximity. What was the conversation about and how did you go well, two minutes? I'll tell you what the conversation was about. It was about me and I was doing most of the talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> which obviously contributed to my... So where, where, in fact, was your wife? Uh, my, I, don't, I don't know where she was. She was just not... I was Have in... you ever seen your wife again? <laughs> <laughs> so where were you? I'm, I'm guessing that this is a safari scenario, am I right? Uh, it was sort of on the, on the outskirts of Cape Town. Describe the nature of the structure you were in. Right. <laughs> is it a building? Is it on the fourth floor of a... Of a... Did okay. the hippo have to get in a lift? They're, they're... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. OK, well, it's mainly bungalows. The resort is a collection of uh, sort of bungalow buildings, largely A-frame wooden buildings with a kind of thatched roof. Why were the doors so big a hippo could get in? Well, it's a, it's a small hippo, isn't it? <laughs> How small is yeah. a small hippo? <laughs> Like, like a George from Rainbow, or...? Very <laughs> 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 right, big. So, but... the, the hippo was only that big? Yeah. It's about the size of a, of a Labrador. Well, yeah, let's be clear. clear. Is yeah. that its width or its length? <laughs> uh, that, is its, that is its width, as viewed from behind, and I suspect from the front. This is worse. Your wife's like the back end of a hippo. <laughs> <laughs> this A-frame bungalow has how many rooms in it? Uh, it's got it's got two rooms. At one end there's a, a big bathroom, uh, and then there's uh, the rest of it is a very big open plan bedroom, and it has a sort of seating area in the middle of it, and it has a bed at the far end, a very robust bed, and uh... <laughs> a bed you could make love to a hippo on. <laughs> Is speculation, but I wouldn't bet against it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're in the bungalow. Okay, I'm in the I'm in the uh, the ensuite end. Yes. Okay, and I'd been shaving and then <laughs> you know shouting over my shoulder, and I realised after a while I'm not getting a lot back here, and um, I turned round and I saw that I had not been moaning about my career to my wife, but to a baby hippo. <laughs> How long was this baby yeah. hippo? Well, I only saw it from the back, but I imagine, statistically, it'd be, what, probably three times as long as it was wide? OK. <laughs> so, so, broadly, so it was a sort of as long as this desk? Nobody measures or, or animals by long. width. Well, you're you're doing doing oh, I saw a massive snake, it was this big. So what are you going to say? Is he telling the truth? I think? think, based on the width, yeah. it's a lie. I think that was a panicked reach for width. <laughs> <laughs> on the basis of the panicked reach for width... <laughs> I think we'll say it's a lie. You're going to say that's a yeah. lie? OK, yeah. Miles, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is... a lie. Oh, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Miles didn't mistake his wife for a hippo whilst on holiday. Whenever I'm in a situation where I don't know what to do, I ask myself the question, what would Cliff Richard do? <laughs> <laughs> um, please, team. But give me an example. Say you don't know if you're going to go on a skiing holiday or a summer holiday. What would you do in that situation? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I, I say to myself, what, um, what would Cliff do? Why Cliff Richard as well? I just think because he's someone that lives his life in a way that I believe we should all aspire to. <laughs> So tell, tell me this. What, what was the last dilemma? <laughs> last dilemma you had where the Cliff Richard uh, thing helped? Well, you, you know, you go to you go to Pret, and uh, as ever, <laughs> the queuing's a complete disgrace. And you think, what would Cliff Richard do? Well, I walk out. <laughs> <laughs> when did you first let Cliff into your life? Um, in a way, I feel more like I've been let into his. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got a lot of Cliff's albums? Yes. Well, <laughs> I, th I, think you know where this, I think you know where this is going, Miles. Of all the albums, all of them, yeah. I just want one album. That's all I want. <laughs> um, greatest Hits, Volume 2. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, Lee? Is it the truth? What do we say, what do, we say to that, Amelia? Do you think there's any truth in that? I don't think we can possibly... Not even mean. entertain the notion? No. <laughs> as entertaining as the notion may be. Yeah. You. Say lie. Say lie. Okay. Uh, Miles, truth or lie? This is actually a lie. <laughs> <laughs> After a visit to a school fete, I had to tell my neighbour their cat had been run over, while my own face was painted like a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> please, team. <laughs> <laughs> Please be true. Please, <laughs> please. You, you were at the school fete as what? As a as a dad, or were you working on the stall doing the face painting or anything? Or were you uh, I, I, there was a sort of shift, so I, I did help uh, with what, with one of the stalls, but I was also there just as a as a parent. What was the stall you were helping on? Bric-a-brac. Bric-a-brac. <laughs> Bric-a-brac. How did you find out the cat had been killed? Because it was uh, killed regrettably close to our house. What kind of cat was it? A tabby cat. And how was it killed? Sorry. Unfortunately, it was a truck that shouldn't have been... It was one of the very... Not just a normal size lorry, a very, very long uh, lorry that should not really have thought that it could drive around those streets but was attempting to, and it flattened. Um... So you actually saw the lorry flatten the cat and then you had to go and tell the neighbour? Uh, yeah. I feel like this is the truth, except for the part about the truck and that actually you killed this cat. <laughs> <laughs> what was the cat called? Uh, she was called... Um, she was called Jenny. Jenny the cat? Jenny! Jenny. What was the owner called? Tiddles. <laughs> <laughs> no, in a horrible <laughs> name mix-up, <laughs> they started calling each other by the wrong name. <laughs> if you want to find, you know, find fault with someone's cat naming logic, you've got to have a go at my neighbours. Well, they're Just grieving. Say. Let's leave them out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you, you kill their cat? I didn't. I just, I you was say you didn't kill the cat. You might have been partly responsible because you were there dressed as a cat when it happened. It might have been the driver of the truck. dressed as a cat. I has, just... <laughs> has looked over and gone, size of that cat. <laughs> Meanwhile, the little cat crossed in the road has gone, is that your mummy? <laughs> <laughs> Those two incidents combined, you've killed little oh. Jennifer to give her her full name. <laughs> no, just Either me. that or it was a hit aimed for you and the description given was, <laughs> it looks a bit like a cat. <laughs> did you pick the cat up oh, and I... take it to the neighbours or did you just point to the cat and say, that's where your cat is? <clears throat> no. uh, I, didn't, I didn't pick it up. What happened when they answered the door? Talk us through that conversation. That must have been very awkward. Yeah, had you still, at this point, not remembered that your face was painted like no, that? No, I didn't remember until after I told them, and then I went home and went, oh, I just had to tell so and so. So you, they've opened the door. Can you remember anything about the first few words of that conversation? Well, it was very awkward. I've never had to do that before. So I, I said... Meow! <laughs> 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 they, they said, hello, in a sort of cheery, or oh, maybe he's come round for yeah. some sort of jolly reason. Well, don't give him that impression. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, I'm really sorry, but I'm afraid that I've, I've just seen um, uh, Jenny get, get run over. And they said... What? Did, what did they say then? <laughs> oh, sorry, you're they acting. They said what? I thought you were asking me, sorry. I genuinely thought you didn't understand the question, but you were in character, sorry. Yeah. If we get to a point where you're asking questions I don't understand, something oh. has happened. <laughs> um... <laughs> the, the regulars like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and they said, thank you very much for telling us. And then I went back into my house, I lived next door, and... Did you go through the front door or back? <laughs> <laughs> when you realised you had your makeup on still at home? My, which my wife pointed out to me. I came home and I said, oh, this dreadful thing's just happened. And my wife said, you know that you've still got your face painted like a kitten? And I said, oh, no. 
did you and your wife look at each other in shock and just feel terrible, or did you both instantly start laughing? She laughed immediately. I'm... She's an awful woman, though. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Ignore the Irish man. <laughs> you're the best female truck driver in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is? Furballs. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? Does this have the uh, the ring of truth for you? Uh, Amelia, what do we think? I think it's a total lie. Do you? Not do even you? An, an ounce of truth in this? Not for me. It's going round to the neighbours and you haven't really actually told us anything about the neighbours. You haven't talked about who it was who answered the door and how you then got to talk to them. Mm. Oh, right, well, Paul answered the door. Paul. Paul. And Paul is married to... Paul is not married. Oh, but you did say them. You told them that their cat had died. Yeah, there are a number of ways in which people cohabit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. You don't believe I don't it? Believe it. You don't believe it? Mm. Are right. we going to say, say lie? lie? Okay. <clears throat> Miles, truth or lie? O ye of little. It's a lie. <laughs> 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 yes, it's a lie. Uh, Miles didn't have to tell his neighbour their cat had been run over while his face was painted like a skin. Every morning I eat one of those mini multi pack cereals, but to save time and washing up, I pour the milk straight into the packet. <laughs> David's tea. <laughs> One of the, like, the mini variety pack cereals. That's right, yes. Yeah. Are you often in a rush of a morning? Why are you, why are you needing to save time, please? Uh, what I don't enjoy doing is, is washing up, and I've taken a sort of stand. I bought a dishwasher, and my wife doesn't like dishwashers, so she insists that I wash everything up. Wow. What is it about dishwashers that Mrs Jupp objects to? Yeah. Uh, she objects to, to, to the noise. She objects oh, to the... Oh, they're so they are very noisy, noisy aren't they? Yeah. It's like a pneumatic drill in the corner of the if, kitchen. If you have a problem with some of my wife's opinions, you must take this up with her, Rob. <laughs> uh, she objects to the, uh, the rise of the machines. Um, <laughs> Just... Does, she, does she think that the, the dishwasher represents the thin end of some kind of robotic takeover wedge? The robotic takeover wedge is the very phrase, <laughs> David. Yeah. Where does she stand on the hoover? That is not how a hoover operates. <laughs> um... so Miles, what are, the, what are the cereals you get in those little boxes? <laughs> this is the test, isn't it? Well, you get um, Frosties, Good Rice stop. Krispies, nice. yep. uh, Corn Flakes, Crunchy nut cornflakes, cocoa pops. Three more to go. <laughs> and What's your favourite? If you don't get this right, this last one, it'll be Cheerio to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that reminds me. Hula, hula hoops. Uh, what are they? Uh, no, Cheerios. Um, and then it's actually on a rotation, so there will be some swaps. You don't always get eight separate. Can we trouble you for a full mime? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. You've got a little box of cocoa pops yeah. there. I, I draw up. The inner bag, and I open it like this carefully. Yeah, draw nice out its little underwear. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that, you, you've given away a lot there, David. <laughs> so I, I pour the milk in, into the bag, and then I eat the cereal, and then when there's a little bit of milk left over, I pour that into my mouth. Meanwhile, his wife sat in the corner weeping. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find no problem of uh, sort of sloppage? between bag and inner cardboard. Well, if I spilled something, I would get some sort of disposable material, such as kitchen roll, and, and, and wipe it up and then drop you it straight into the... You um... don't find that something sort of leaks down, a bit, a bit of sticky goo, in a way that would be displeasing to someone as tidy as you? No, this I This is like C-3PO talking to R2-D. <laughs> <two. laughs> I don't have any uh, breakfast-time seepage issues. <laughs> When you've been married a while, that sort of stuff does tend to tail off. Um, <laughs> what do you think, truth um, or lie? Well, what's clear is that Miles is... Well, Miles' wife is Amish. <laughs> he's, not, he's not accepting of her religious no. views. Yeah. That's, <laughs> very, yeah, that's very, very sad. <laughs> what do you think, Stephen? I think he's thrashing about and drowning in a lie soup. <laughs> <laughs> What are you thinking, Miranda? Because it's so ridiculous, I'm veering towards the truth. You think true? Uh, yeah, why not? You think lie? I think a lie. Yeah. I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? OK. Miles, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling a... <laughs> lie. <laughs> it was a lie. Yeah. 
Uh, Miles doesn't pour milk straight into cereal packets to save time. Every time I shower, I must adhere to my strict system for drying myself. OK, quick as you can, what's the system for drying yourself? Well, I, I, uh, I always use a towel. <laughs> you uh, weird eccentric. <laughs> Well, actually, I, I don't start with a towel. I use, I, I, I sort of brush water off this arm. I can do that twenty times with, with your hand. <laughs> with my hand. Yeah. And then twenty times that one. Do you dry yourself between your legs with your hands? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, I, 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 I don't, Richard. Is it like an OCD thing where it, where it is 20, or is it roughly 20? Oh, it can be multiples of 20. <laughs> You're not serious. Yeah, so, like, 20 of those, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... We know what 20 is, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, And then the same with that. And then 30 in the hair. <laughs> 30 in the hair. <laughs> and then I go... And then I think if I'm ready to move on to the towel phase. I think I've done the arm and head thing, it's towel time. <laughs> and when did, when did you start doing this? In the last, uh, two years. Uh, when you reach for the towel, um, are there any other oddities, or do you basically then proceed in what we would refer to as a conventional drying manner? Well, I, I get the towel and I do uh, 50 on the top of the head. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, and then this is quite a new development, actually. Probably within the last. The whole year. thing is quite a new development. <laughs> no, no, but this... you clearly had some sort of breakdown a couple of years ago. <laughs> so, right. so now it's 50 on top and 50 behind, whereas it used to just be 50 on top. What was it about your drying policy before this Good point, question. two or three years ago, that you considered inadequate? I was getting through a lot of towels. <laughs> How much moisture do you hold? <laughs> I, I am unbelievably absorbent. You, one, one could wring me out like a sponge. I Have really... you tried that? Because that might be a more efficient way of... I don't see what it is about this system that is hard to believe or understand. I don't like it. No, no. <laughs> well, no don't do it. <laughs> if, if this turns out to be true, it's going to be a, a tense evening. <laughs> <laughs> Do you or have you ever washed your car by hand rather than going through the drive-thru or something? Uh, no, never. No, really? Never. Never? I've You're never... the most middle-class man I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> You've never washed your own car? I've, I've been to the, uh, the, you know, the roly one. That's not the same, <laughs> Al. <laughs> Getting the coin and putting it in the slot does not constitute manual labour. I've, <laughs> I've only had a car for three years. Maybe did that's this, why this started. Your, yes, it's in the purchase of the car just... coincide with a new shower policy. <laughs> Yeah. Having seen the car go through the roly thing that, for some reason, you don't know the name of, even though the name pretty much creates itself. <laughs> That's right. You sort of think, I want to create car, my own domestic <laughs> version of this with my hands. <laughs> I, I don't... Yeah. Do you have a little sign when you go into the bathroom that says, Stop. <laughs> Once you get... Do you, do you edge forward, waiting? Yeah. Stop. <laughs> And you've got to do it quickly, cos you know things are going to go beep, beep, and you're going to get out again. <laughs> so, David, it's time to take a guess. What do you think? Um, it's truly horrible. Um, <laughs> but I want, I want it to be true, and, and, I, and I, I'm an optimist in life, so I'll say it's true. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't go with that. I mean, if it is true, then it's really disturbing and frightening and, and all those other things that you scare your kids with. <laughs> My instinct is that it's a lie. OK, so you're saying it's, it's a, a lie. lie. Well. Yes. Miles, were you telling the truth, Miles, or were you telling a lie? Uh, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> almost unbelievably, it's true. <laughs> Every time Miles showers, he must adhere to his strict system for drying himself.